Now, in-depth coverage of the Texas Legislative Session. In Session, In-Depth. Good morning and thank you for joining us for a special edition of In Session In Depth. I'm Josh Hinkle and this morning I join you from West Texas, just blocks away from the site of a devastating fertilizer plant explosion. It was ground zero for one of the worst disasters to hit our area in recent years. Many buildings in Zone 3 look more like a war zone than a small Texas town. 14 people are dead, including 10 first responders. Some 200 people were hurt. With disasters of this scale, many wonder what caused it and how people will recover. This week, local, state, and federal officials stopped by West to see the damage. On Thursday, President Obama spoke at a memorial service in nearby Waco. Members of Congress, including Senators John Cornyn and Ted Cruz, also visited West. Governor Perry toured the area, talking about the investigation into the cause. Now is the time to be uh, both making the recovery side of this uh, and also asking those type of appropriate questions about but as the recovery efforts gain more traction, so does the search for answers to what caused the fire that led to the explosion. So far, investigators have ruled out natural causes. They were also looking into a theory that a nearby rail car caused the fire. However, now it appears the burned out rail car was actually damaged by the explosion and not the other way around. One issue for investigators now, they don't know how much ammonium nitrate was in the plant thanks to a gap in federal law. After the Oklahoma City bombing and September 11th attacks, the federal government required companies storing more than 400 pounds of the explosive ingredient used in fertilizer to register with the Department of Homeland Security. But the owners of West Fertilizer did not register, even though state records showed it had the capacity to store 270 tons of the chemical. The problem, the Federal Department of Homeland Security doesn't investigate facilities that don't file reports. Efforts to strengthen federal oversight of the material for safety reasons stalled in Congress back in 2007. But the West Fertilizer Plant was fined multiple times for violating regulations over the past few years. In 2006, TCEQ investigated the plant after a complaint about an odor. The agency hadn't been back because there hadn't been any other complaints. But in 2011, the EPA cited the plant for not having an up-to-date risk management plan, which the company later created. But last summer, the federal agency that oversees pipelines fined the company $10,000 for improperly labeling storage tanks and preparing to transfer chemicals without a security plan. Environmental groups like the Texas League of Conservation Voters are targeting several bills in the state legislature to loosen regulations. That group's leader says even if there were questions into what caused the explosion, it would, quote, seem like this would be the wrong time to be weakening environmental regulations and the ability of cities and communities to take part in the process. Waiting for answers has been especially frustrating for the people waiting the longest to get back to their homes. Many found out there was no home left to go back to. We got a first look inside one of the hardest hit neighborhoods. Spring Street, now dubbed Destruction Drive. The insides of houses demolished, people trying to get help, it's, it's awful. Too awful to stay put. Christy Jones and her family lived here only two months before the blast. So we're having to pack our stuff up and take it to a storage or somewhere like that until we can find a house to rent. But moving day is a little light because they have to leave behind a lot. The couches were covered in glass. The, all the floor was covered in glass. The, both the windows were busted out. And their neighbors were even worse. All their ceilings caved in. Next door is not like this. and it's just crazy the way it damaged things. Most won't move back on this block. Just stay strong for each other. The Joneses were at church when the explosion hit their house. And we have six in our family. I have three girls and one boy. Christy credits faith for her family's survival and its future. I just praise God because my family wasn't here. Still to come, our West coverage continues. A visit from the president as families in the area begin the healing process when In Session In Depth returns. We pay tribute to those lives by the ringing of the bell.
Welcome back to our special edition of In Session In Depth from the community of West. It's been more than a week since the devastating explosion at the fertilizer plant behind me. 14 dead, more than 200 injured. It warranted a trip from President Obama. We may not all live here in Texas, but we're neighbors too. We're Americans too. And we stand with you and we do not forget. And we'll be there even after the cameras leave and after the attention turns elsewhere. Your country will remain ever ready to help you recover and rebuild and reclaim your community. As the president spoke at this memorial service in Waco, those affected by the explosion say the destruction will leave a lasting impact on the community. Our Chris Sadegui has more. Waving high above everyone, and waving in young Colton Busby's hand was a symbol that stands for a lot of different things. Freedom, a good life, promising future for our little ones right here. But right here in this moment, there was one thing it stood for more than any other. A lot of brave people. Because brave people are the kind that make you proud. It's a privilege to be here to honor. I wouldn't be anywhere else today. But brave people are also the kind that will make you cry. It's really heartbreaking. It's scary because, you know, Every time they go to work, you never know. And it's the bravest of people that make it hardest to say goodbye. I'm a, re a retired firefighter, so I feel like I lost some brothers the other night. Lost, yet found, beneath a symbol of bravery. Twelve brave people willing to walk through fire. The president is the president, but we're here to show respect for the heroes that gave their life. American honor, all aimed towards the small Texas town of West. It just goes to show you what kind of people are in this great state and this country. And during the service, Speaker Ron Siernicki said that anybody can ride one of these trucks, pull a hose, climb a ladder, but to put others' lives before your own, that is the honor of firefighting. In Waco, Chris Sadegui, KXAN News. The president offered federal aid to the state to help in the aftermath of the explosion. The amount is expected to be $100 million. Look at the blast side of these apartments. The impact of the explosion felt far outside the small town of West. And soon after the disaster, Agriculture Commissioner Todd Staples visited the area, posting this video on the department's Facebook page. I spoke with Commissioner Staples this week. I was actually on Interstate 35 about 20, 30 minutes after the initial blast happened. And the amazing thing is that even after the accident occurred, people rushed to the scene. And those are the individuals that we honored here today, those that risked their lives to save others. And I think today sends a very strong message, and that message is that Texans are defined by our actions, not by events. It seems like everyone is searching for answers right now, and we've heard about maybe the inspection process falling through uh, the gap in law. What do you think should be done differently? I think we need to uh, 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 honor those whose lives have been lost today, first and foremost, have respect for those families, and to let them know that Texans are standing with them. I think we need to have a very thorough investigation to make certain that something like this never happens again. But we know we live in a dangerous world. We know that there are hazardous materials all across our nation. But thankfully, we have uh, brave and selfless individuals like these firefighters that are honored today uh, that go in harm's way so that we can be protected. And our hearts certainly go out to the community of West. What a long rebuilding process that will be. I think they were comforted today by the president, by Governor Perry and Senator Cornyn, and we're going to be there with them. And that was a strong commitment from our federal government today and from citizens all across our nation that are going to help them in the rebuilding process. You've had a very visible presence with this, and I know you have a campaign for lieutenant governor going on. If you are elected, are there things that you think you can work with the legislature on trying to prevent something like this in the future? Well, I can say as Commissioner of Agriculture today that we are the rural agency for our state. We have already had conversations with city and county leaders. Uh, my agency will be participating in a uh, survey of the damage uh, just in a short couple of days in order to help that rebuilding process. And that's really what I'm focused on at this time is to make certain that the resources that we have uh, are being ready to help this community rebuild. Uh, we know that um, well over 100 homes will have to be leveled 
many other hundreds of structures will have to be rebuilt. I spoke with one of the uh, West Independent School District trustees today, and they're making certain their kids uh, let them know that they're going to be there and provide the quality education. In spite of three schools in a small community, uh, they can't be used today. Coming up, we'll hear some amazing stories of acts of heroism here in West when In Session In Depth returns. first set of funerals after the disastrous explosion in the community of West. This is video from a service for Kenneth Harris, a 31-year-old veteran of the Dallas Fire Department who lived in West. It is only the beginning as the community buries 14 bodies after the explosion. There were countless stories of heroism during the disaster. Some were firefighters, others were regular people like you and me. A picture, it's a story. A portrait studio was a fast way for Billy Birch and his wife Stephanie. Oh my goodness. To meet the faces of a community they've called home less than a year. Their shop, along with most others downtown, showed signs of what happened in West last week. It was probably about a foot out. An explosion at the fertilizer plant a mile away. And had to take and reach up and grab the desk and move it back up against the wall. While many residents ran away from the scene, the couple ran to it. And then the nursing home, people coming out bleeding, and I still had no idea what had happened. Elderly patients buried under the rubble just a block away from the blast. You had wires hanging down. There were light fixtures, some that were still hanging. There was no ceiling. You could hear water leaking in already. You could hear the screams from patients trying to get out. It wasn't something you think about at the time. You just do what you have to do. They rescued 16 people before emergency crews arrived. And so for the people that have lost loved ones, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes right now. I would hate to think that my son was there when that happened because he would have been one of the ones that might be unaccounted for or, or deceased. And that would have been, that would have been one of the hardest things I've ever faced in my life, is to lose one of my children. Pictures say something, tell a story. This one of the home they lost in a fire two years ago. When you see that in a picture, it can describe every bit of their hurt, every bit of their pain, and every bit of their sorrow. But in time, they say a picture can change for the better. You just hope for the best at all times. As the community of West continues to heal, now is the time you can help in the recovery. KXAN is working with HEB stores to help the people of West. You can make donations to the American Red Cross at all Austin area HEBs at the checkout. That will do it for us here in West. Our thoughts and prayers remain with the people living here. You can join the conversation now by logging on to KXAN.com. Just search for the legislative section. There you'll find our guide to the legislative process in Texas and my blog from the Capitol. We also have a special section dedicated to our West coverage on the main page at KXAN.com. Thanks for joining us for In Session In Depth. Have a great morning.